Hello and welcome to the shop. Now today is going to be solely about Mac 3 and more importantly setting up Mac 3 to this newly completed CNC project. It's a 1200 by 1500 so that's roughly 4 foot by 5 foot uh, CNC router. All the plans for this rotor build and all the parts list and pricing will be available on my Patreon pages by the end of next week. So, let's set up Mark 3 to this full size brand new CNC router. Okay, I, on this computer I don't have screen capture and I talk a lot with my hands anyway. Um, I, I think it's more personal, especially with uh, Mac 3, to video like this. So let's make a start. Now we're going to take this out of the emergency stop mode. It's connected to the CNC router and it's, the router is switched on everything's live it's connected via a USB cable so you might see some strange um, connections on Mac 3 so the first thing you need to do and this is just the basic figures that I put in to just get it started we'll tune it in in about 10 minutes into the video so uh, it could, you know, it can be quite uh, complex, but if you do it methodically, it's okay. Now, the first things to switch on, as it were, uh, so you come here to config ports and pins. Now, first of all, you you look for your port address, and in this case, it's uh, O X. 278 okay um, motor output so you're going to switch the line on for your motors now uh, I have pre uh, should we say switch these on and actually tried the motors and I've discovered a couple of things so you'll notice here First of all, X axis enable, Y axis enable, Z axis enable. These figures here really relate to the old 25 pin port, although they do still, uh, shall we say, have a value um, down the USB cable. So the uh, smooth sepper board can dis distinguish uh, which line is uh, or which motor is required to be moved. Now you'll notice here on the direction, this is the step low and direction. Um, when I started my rotor up, uh, the x axis was moving in the opposite direction to what I required so if you have the same problem as that okay it was originally like this and if it's moving in the wrong direction that is the one you change to move it in the opposite direction uh, when you know when you toggle the keys on the keyboard so really that's it for that um, input signals okay I have limit switches here uh, and I've activated them or enabled them so there's a home switch on X Y and Z hence the tick um, and again the port and the port being a USB port will always be port 1 and pin out numbers uh, really don't matter to us but what you do is 
you connect up uh, these pin numbers that are actually on the smooth stepper board. So the switch for the home switch for X will be connected to the the connection or the pin number then shall we say on the board number one of inputs and so on and so forth like the Y is connected to the pin out or the board out then on the smooth stepper of number two and Z is on number three and the most important one and you shouldn't have a CNC router running without the, let me see where is it down here a bit further there it is an e-stop switch a lot of people run their routers without an e-stop switch you can't always grab the mouse and come and hit either reset stop or fee hold on Mac 3. It's easier and, and probably safer just to, uh, if you see something going drastically wrong hit the e-stop on the machine. So that's enabled and there again in the output signals, now this is um, this is a live output of five volts, uh, so it's preferable for the e stop to be a positive sig signal rather than an, an you know an earth signal, because if the cable breaks or something happens, you know spade connector comes off or something, it'll just keep going. So having a live 5 volt signal, um, and the 5 volt signal is, is uh, supplied off the board itself, uh, then you just take the signal to the e-stop switch on one side of it, then at the other side of the e-stop switch uh, you take and connect it into connection number 10 on the smooth stepper board. So that means when the switch is pulled out there's a 5 volt signal going through um, and which Mac 3 recognizes that okay it's okay to run and immediately it loses that 5 volt signal it will command Mac 3 to do an emergency uh, stop or e-stop so that is a, a very important one to have and I'll demonstrate that in a few moments so we're going to okay uh, anything else we need to do to get you started nothing else here needs to be played with at all so we're okay there now the next thing to look at is just the basic setup for the motors because you want to be able to start running it. So you've got to put some sort of figures in here. So what I normally do to start off with, now these are not the correct numbers. These are just basic numbers that I know that, you know, Mac 3 is able to move the machine at, you know, uh, a rate that you can work with. And we will tune the Mac 3 in to be very accurate uh, in a short while. So, uh, what I do, is, because I have the drivers set at 800 micro steps, um, I know that 250 steps on here is, uh, you know, represents a comfortable speed and manageable speed and the thing isn't going to take off on you. The same going for the velocity of 1000 millimeters per minute. It's a very manageable speed. Okay. And acceleration, uh, 150 uh, millimeters per second per second. 
this is a comfortable acceleration you know it's not a giving you a straight line up here uh, it's going to go as soon as you push the button it's going to go bang straight up to you know sort of one uh, one meter per minute although that's fairly slow uh, if you have this set too high or this one too high you start losing steps so that needs to be avoided so these figures here don't worry about the um, don't worry about this figure here Mark 3 will set that itself so these are the figures that you should put in just to get you started unless the supplier of your drivers and your stepper motors advise you otherwise this is a starting point so now to check uh, this is all okay the same for the three axes uh, y and z and that's all okay uh, so now what we can do I want to take this uh, emergency reset out and I'm going over here now to diagnostics now this is an important area here um, these little LEDs on here will show you what's working and what's not now I'm just going to put my hand over, reach over and just toggle the Y-axis home switch and there it is there on M2 home switch uh, I'm going to toggle the others, this is the Z and the X okay so those are working so now the e-stop so the e-stop is working and it's brought this reset up as well which is good so we can now turn that back on and press the reset here to activate Mark 3 so now we know that Mark 3 sees the important uh, should we say indicators from the machine and uh, it reads them so uh, we should now be able to uh, start tuning Mark 3 in just before we start tuning the machine in, there's another important thing you need to uh, have a look at, and that is homing and limits. Um, so, okay, they're, they're all switched on here. Now, I did, I think in an earlier video, say that I would show you um, how to or where to adjust the speed at which uh, the machine homes. Now I have got this set at 10% and this is the window here that you, you change the speed at which uh, the machine will home. So when we've got the when we've got the entire machine tuned in I can raise this up if needed but I like to set it nice and slow so I've got a chance to hit the e-stop if I see something going wrong <laughs> so this is the normal setup so we can OK that now and so let's see uh, how the machine is going to perform OK now whatever you do do not just go straight in and press ref all uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to reference each axis separately in mark 3 so you come up here again to uh, where are we diagnostics and you come to this win window over here so over this side here and what we're going to do is reference 
the Z only. So we're telling Mac 3, we want you to go and find the home switch on the Z axis only. So I'm going to put the camera up to the home switch on the Z axis and uh, all I'm going to do is press that button there. Okay? Okay, here we go. Now see that 10% is a little slow, but shall we say it's very, very controllable. And I've got time to do something if something goes wrong. So there you are, it triggers and comes back to its home position. And now you will see the DROs for the Z has gone to zero. And you just got to make sure that you're on machine coordinates. You see that lit up there. So now that one has home. So we're going to do the same now for the Y and the X.